Hello and welcome to Millennium Movies. I am your host, Jesse James. Let's get right into this review. So, I want to talk about a couple of things. First off, with the couple of deaths that we got from C-list characters from both The Hilltop and Alexandria, starting first with a couple of uh, Hilltop survivors in Andy, and I forget the other guy who was very uh, kind of like jitterish, he was kind of shaky with his gun. Uh, there was a point where they're trying to get the jump on a couple of saviors inside this room, and while they're there, you notice that the guy is like kind of shaking, you know, he's shaking his gun and Andy like kind of tries to stop him, tries to cool him down. And then the first guy, you know, walks through the door and they kill him, they kill the first guy, but then afterwards they both freeze. And then all these other saviors come, come you know, rushing out and they, they kill all three of them, at least seemingly. But Morgan was the only one who had any armor on, so Morgan was okay. But Andy and that other guy were just toast. They were completely goners. And uh, Andy was was around, I, I think he was introduced around midway through season six. So, I mean, he's kind of been around for a, a little bit, I guess. Uh, I, I, I think, think he was an okay character, but he was a C-list character, like I said. So, uh, not, not too much worried about that. But uh, aside from him, we also got Francine, who's an Alexandrian, an original Alexandrian. She's her most memorable moment in the entire series is probably way back in season five, when uh, her, Tobin, and uh, Abraham, rest in peace, were all at the uh, construction area outside the walls of Alexandria and a couple of walkers attacked and she got hurt and Tobin wanted to uh, run away and have, every have everybody retreat and be safe. But Abraham said, no, no way. I'm going to take out all these walkers and save Francine. And Francine helped Abraham fight back as well. So that's probably her most memorable moment, but she was uh, killed in this episode. It looks like she was shot like right near the heart or right in the heart. I'm not sure, but you know, she just fell back and... You know, there was nothing that, that Aaron could do for her, or it might have been Eric, I'm not sure who, who was next to her. I think it was Eric, but there's nothing they could do for her. So we got those deaths in the show, and um, I don't, I, 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 I think it's very realistic, though, that, that we would lose members on those. Granted, they're not huge characters, but it does make sense. And, and, other, and other background characters from the Hilltop and Alexandria were, were killed as well. And as well from the kingdom. I don't, I don't know about the kingdom. I'm actually not too sure. Oh, I guess we got that one guy who was jitterish. But, so I, I think it's very realistic to have those deaths on the show. And um, we got a near death, which uh, I predicted in my Walking Dead death predictions video, which you might have seen on my channel. If you haven't seen it, you can go back and watch it and see how I'm doing with my predictions. But I said that Eric was going to die during All Out War, but I was wrong about the timing because I said he would die in the first episode. But it, now it seems like he's going to die in episode 3 because uh, he had an awesome moment where he was just, you know, guns a-blazing, taking out uh, saviors. But then it's revealed to us that he was uh, shot in the stomach and Aaron tries to, you know, come over and try and get him out of there. And in the preview for next week's episode, it looks like he's still trying to get him, like, back to the, back to the hilltop or something to try and get treatment. But the hilltop doesn't have a doctor, so I, it looks like Eric's time will be over, but hopefully at least different from the comic books, instead of just getting blasted in the face, Eric's going to slowly die, and at least with that, he can at least have a few final words with Aaron. So that'll be probably be a very sweet moment. Uh, bittersweet, I should say, and uh, further develop Aaron's character. Uh, speaking of characters who are not for long, though, I also predicted that Shiva might die in that first episode as well. I was wrong about the timing, but I do think that her time is coming up soon. I think she's on borrowed time. Unfortunately, she's an awesome tiger and she got a cool kill in this episode. But, uh, you know, you just gotta imagine CGI tiger probably costs the, you know, the special effects crew a, a pretty penny to make. So, to bring her to life. So, I would, I would venture to say, based on the preview where it looks like Ezekiel and, and his crew, Carol and their crew, are getting, like, uh, surrounded by other saviors. I would imagine she was gonna just retaliate because she's, you know, she, you know, she's in a hostile moment, in a hostile environment. She might retaliate, take out a couple of saviors, and either other saviors or walkers might take her out. So I don't know how long she is for the show, but she did have a cool moment in this episode. So that was that was nice to see. Uh, moving on from there, uh, we had Jesus, uh, Paul Rouvier in the show, Paul Monroe. Uh, we had him and Tara on totally separate viewpoints because Tara wanted to, she just wanted to kill this guy who, who had raised his hands up. He gave up. And Jesus was like, no, he gave up. We're not like that. This isn't about revenge. And it's very similar to what Father Gabriel was telling Rick. It's not about revenge. And that backfired on Gabriel. And the same exact thing happened to Jesus in that it backfired on him. But luckily, he has this crazy ninja skills where he was able to get away from it. But 
um, we see that they're on totally different viewpoints, and they've she, the Tara especially has changed so much. You think about all the way back in season four when she was introduced to us, she was so scared during the uh, prison assault, during the prison, the final prison battle uh, in season four, and she was just so scared. She was like covering her ears. She was scared of the gunshots. She was frightened. And she didn't want to kill anybody. And now, a couple seasons later, she's she's already she's she's bloodthirsty because they killed Denise. Obviously, uh, Dwight killed Denise. The Saviors killed Glenn, who was the person who invited her to join the group, who allowed, who vouched for her. So I can understand where Tara's coming from, and I agree with Tara in this case because while I do I do agree with Jesus partially that you have to be a good person still. And you have to have those good human qualities that make you human, you know? You gotta keep your humanity, but at the same time, it just it's very reminiscent of Morgan's ideologies back in season uh, six, and I, maybe part of season five, if I remember correctly, I think, I think at the end of season five is when he joined in. So, that's gonna get somebody killed. And, I, and it won't be Jesus, but it could get somebody else killed. So I, I hope that that doesn't happen, but we see it later as well when Morgan's just full clear mode. He's he's just seeing red. He's he's killing every savior in sight. He is like Jason Voorhees on the Friday the 13th game. He is just all out rage mode. And he is uh, capping guys left and right. And then he's about to kill that long haired D-bag whose name I don't remember and I don't care to remember because I just hate the guy so much. The guy who killed Benjamin. He needs to go. That guy has got to go. I don't care how, whether it's Shiva or Morgan, someone has to, or something has to take him out brutally. And Jesus stopped Morgan from doing it. Ugh, just it got to me. It got to me. I like Jesus as a character, but come on, you gotta let Morgan have his revenge here. He has to. He needs it. He needs it. I know Morgan wants it. We want it. You know, just let us see it. But of course, it looks like they're gonna make us wait a couple more episodes. But that guy is gonna die for sure. It's just a matter of time. They're making us wait just a little bit more, but it's going to be that much sweeter when he does bite the bullet. So, that was that. Uh, the craziest thing in this entire episode, though, you guys, the Walking Dead community, made this happen. There's not a doubt in my mind that this would not have happened if there wasn't so much, I guess, outcry for this and demand. Morales, from Season 1 of The Walking Dead, is back. After six seasons, the man has been written back into the story. Wow. Good on you guys. You, got, you guys brought him back. There's not a doubt in my mind that, that the creators were not... They didn't have any plans for him. Don't You can't tell me that they had plans for him all along to return back in season seven. I mean, season, uh, season, <clears throat> season eight. There's just no way. No way. So... Wow, you guys brought him back. And, I, and I'm kind of happy to see him back. But I'm a little worried. I'm happy because I like to see minority, you know, characters get represented in The Walking Dead. Because it's just, especially like Hispanic characters. Morales was in season one and then he was written off. And we didn't get another Hispanic character until season three, which was uh, Caesar. Uh, Caesar Martinez from the, governor's, from the governor's crew. And and of course, he's a bad guy, so he was killed by the governor. Which was kind of actually sad to see, but he was not, he was not a very good person, Martinez, or he was kind of conflicted, I guess you could say, but he was killed as well. And aside from those two, there's been no other Hispanic male characters in the show. At least, yeah, no, there has not been. There's been a Hispanic female in Rosita, but she's kind of hard to like sometimes. Let's just be honest. Uh, at least to me, she, the character's kind of hard to 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 get behind, at least. But excuse me. So I'm happy to see Morales back. And who would have thought, out of the Atlanta Five, who would have thought that our Atlanta Five, six, seven seasons later, would be Rick, Carl, Carol, Daryl, and Morales. Two characters who aren't even in the comic book series, which started this TV series. And then one of those characters in Carol was killed in the comic book series as soon as they got to the prison, which would have been in season three of this show. That is absolutely mind-blowing to me, but I honestly don't know if I would have it any other way. I mean, I really, I don't know. Uh, so that's kind of cool that Morales has lasted this long. So 
I don't think we're going to get a backstory episode, but as for the thing that's worrying, that's worrying to me about Morales being thrown back into the mix is I feel, I, I feel that they might have thrown him back in just to shut the fans up. Just to say, okay, you guys want Morales back? You want him back so badly? We're going to bring him back and he's going to be a savior and he's going to be a bad guy. He's going to be an antagonist. He's going to be a villain. And in the next episode, Rick and crew are going to just have to be forced to kill him. And that's the end of Morales. You guys can shut up about him. He's officially dead now. Let's move on. I'm afraid that that's going to happen. But my hope, my hope is that Morales can still be turned back to the Alexandrian side. And the good guys, if he at least can see that it looks as if Rick's crew is going to win this war. Um, I guess you could sort of say that that's unrealistic of me. That's unrealistic thinking. That's hopeful thinking, wishful thinking. But so is Morales' character coming back in the first place. So if you're going to go all out unrealistic and all out crazy, don't go halfway. Go all the way. So, you know, I, I don't know where we're going to go with this Morales return. I really don't. It was cool to see them meet up again. I wonder, I, I wonder how many fans remember Morales. Like, aside from hardcore fans, I know you guys do because you're watching this video. But I, I wonder if the casual audience even remembers Morales on, from back from season one. Because it's been a long time. It's been like six years, six, seven years. So, um, yeah, great episode. There was a lot of action. Uh, I loved another shot, too. I forgot to mention this. Where Rick had just killed the man who was protecting his baby, his little girl. Just like Rick would. And, and Rick realizes he sees the baby and he kind of breaks down. And he looks in the mirror and he takes a good, hard look at himself. And I think at this moment, Rick realizes Negan's not the only bad guy in this world anymore. There's really not that many differences between Rick and Negan. If you really think about it and try and sit down and process that. And I think it, it's really weighing on Rick's mind. So, uh, great episode. Very, very well written. Great action. I love the different, I love the different shots that we got to see. Uh, each character really got a little, a nice little moment for themselves to shine. So... Great episode for me overall. Two thumbs up. Uh, yeah, that's really much all I have to say about that. I'll be reviewing next week's episode as well of The Walking Dead. So if you guys like this type of content, I also do movie re movie reviews, movie news, breaking news, all sorts of the stuff. I'm going to be talking about Stranger Things Season 2 and in a couple weeks. I'm going to be reviewing Thor Ragnarok this Friday. It's going to be a lot of fun. So if you're interested in movies and TV shows, consider subscribing to Millennium Movies. That's this guy right here. And I will see you guys next time.